If you follow these guidelines, I guarantee your sermon note slides will look better and be much more consistent. At our weekly young adult gatherings, The Way Dot Movement, we record the message video each week to go on YouTube, and also it gets cut up to create shorts and reels. Be sure to check out my video on that. I have a great technique for finding the best bits. For this recording, we use a single camera, and my goal is to post the message videos so people can rewatch or share them. Something I've never done in these videos is add sermon notes into the video, and it's really a waste of a valuable resource for the viewer, but my excuse has always been that I'm just too busy to do another thing. That is why in this series, we're transforming our process at The Way Movement for how we display our sermon notes, adding them to our YouTube sermon recordings and in the future, live streaming with our lower third sermon notes. To start off, we need to talk about some guidelines we need to follow. So I'm Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs and thanks for joining me on this adventure of helping teams and individuals do church and event production with excellence. So at The Way Movement, during our gatherings, we show full screen sermon notes and lyrics on the screens. The best way for us to create a lower third version of our sermon notes is to set up a second output from ProPresenter. Use looks to assign different themes to each output and create a lower third stream out version of the notes. In the next video in this series, I'll show exactly how to do that. But right now, just as important, if our slides are gonna look good in this new format, then there needs to be some sort of standard that we follow. So to that end, I've created these sermon slide guidelines to make sure our notes are well formatted and consistent. So number one on the sermon slide guidelines, separate each scripture slide into its own slide. This allows our text size and number of lines of text on each slide to be consistent. Number two, on each slide, keep the verse reference as well as show the reference to the full scripture being read. If the speaker stops and talks about a single verse, we don't want to pick back up on a slide where the viewer has to hunt for that verse. Number three, utilize slide labels to then display scripture references on slides. Inside of the theme editor, there is a box on each of the sermon slides where the scripture reference should go. If we change the text box to linked text, then select slide label and current slide, when this theme is in use, whatever the label of our slide is set to, it'll be displayed right here. Number four, when we want multiple bullet points to animate in on a slide, create multiple slides and bring them in one at a time. This allows us to best create different output looks. The last thing is having our teaching team create each week a sermon notes document. This will be a PDF file of teaching notes that we're gonna copy and paste into ProPresenter. The notes in this document should look similar to this and be formatted to include the entire scripture text, verse reference, and translation of each scripture. Then leave clear separation. It's a good idea to maybe even add a few dashes between each item that will become individual slides. Add scriptures, notes, video links, names of still images, all in chronological order through the message. Don't add images to this file, but specify the image name to clarify what image goes where. Then send those images separately. Once the file has been created each week, export and send the file as a PDF that can be opened by any computer. You could also utilize a Google form as an option to send the sermon text and then upload the associated images. Now that we have goals for what we're trying to do, I'm gonna present all of this to our teaching team. I need to see if they like the idea of adding notes to the YouTube videos. I think this will increase the quality of our in-person notes as well, but I need to see what they think. Our teaching team currently sets up their own notes each week and I don't wanna change that, so having their buy-in will mean the difference between this being a reality or not. Sometimes change isn't my responsibility, but it is my responsibility to present the new thing in a way that makes sense and that shows others the value in it. Then they have to decide on their own if they're willing to take the extra time or learn the new thing or maybe even invest in you in the proposed project. I'll definitely have to work with them through the weeks as we implement these changes to make sure that they know what they're supposed to be doing and that they're comfortable with the process. Also, there may be something I overlooked or maybe a better way of doing something that I haven't seen. It's easy to write a YouTube video and act like I know it all. The hard part comes with implementing the change successfully and working through the steps to get everyone on board. Then get everybody trained to make the new thing happen. It doesn't matter if you're a staff or a volunteer, it takes a lot of intentional work. Well, these conversations went super well. I forgot to record any of these conversations, but I spent some time with uh, members of our teaching team and I went over some of these changes and we set up the notes twice from scratch and I think they understand the goal. Now we just need to do some weekly repetition and I'm, but I'm confident that they're gonna get it and in the end, it's gonna make everything so much better. Then I went ahead and pulled a few of our ProPresenter 7 operators aside and had similar discussions with them about how these changes are gonna affect their workflow. I shared the changes we made and how this will help 
us to accomplish our goals of adding notes to the sermon video recording. Then I gave them these three things that I'm going to change about the workflow that I need them to focus on. So number one, before or after worship practice, they need to click through all of the sermon note slides and make sure everything is set up correctly. The teaching team will be setting up those slides like we said, but I want the operators to know what is going on. I like to say, I don't just want people that know that it works, but that know how it works when they push a button. Being able to do basic troubleshooting is super important. I told them they are the last line of defense. It's critical to check and see if any issues were missed. So clicking through all of the sermon note slides just to make sure all the outputs are set uh, before or after worship practice, before the way gathering starts is a critical step. The second thing of three things that I'm going to have the ProPresenter 7 operators do is to make sure that the look worship macro has been applied to each of the worship songs. Nothing in ProPresenter changes unless something changes it. So if we're going into worship after the message without changing the look, then the slides are going to be formatted for the sermon notes. <laughs> Well, I hope you're finding great value in this content. These guidelines are going to be huge as we set up our own sermon notes at The Way Movement. And in the next video, we're going to start at the beginning and do just that. Then in the video, utilizing capture to record your output, we're going to implement some cool tricks to record the output capture and then add those graphics to The Way video that we record each week for YouTube. One last thing, if you have people that are setting up their own slides, they can do this on their own computer at home then send you the ProPresenter 7 file to import to the church computer. Pro 7 can run on any machine without an active license. So as long as the presentation computer is licensed, you won't see the watermark on the output. Well, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video. My goal is to help teams and individuals do church and event production with excellence. So I'll see you in the next one.